episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Okay, uh, as per usual, a big thank you to everybody that uh, watched, liked and commented uh, on last week's episode of the show. It seemed to uh, seemed to go down pretty well. Um, lots of comments, um, quite a mixed bag of comments, but by and large, I think uh, a lot of people seem to have um, an experience of, uh, of Tobermory or Lecce. Um, and a big thank you to the distillery for uh, liking uh, liking the tweet, um, or should we say whoever runs the, uh, the, the distillery's Twitter account, anyway, um, whether they actually watched the episode and, and approved of my uh, conclusion, um, I honestly don't know, or whether they just saw, oh look, somebody's tweeting about us, we bet like that. Um, I often wonder about this sort of thing, but anyway, um, it's always nice to, uh, to to have a like from uh, uh, the distillery that you're talking about, uh, even if they probably haven't watched the show, but anyway, you know, these things happen. Um, anyway, um, this week's episode of the show, uh, I can guarantee you absolutely zero controversy, um, because as you can see from the, uh, the title page, it's... Um, uh, another episode of the show featuring um, the St George's Distillery, or the English Whiskey Company, however you want to call them. Um, and as you well know, I'm a big fan of, uh, of the distillery and um, and what David uh, Fitt, the distiller, is doing there. And just want to say congratulations for uh, his award uh, for Distiller of the Year in the Icons of uh, Whiskey, um, Rest of the World uh, category. Um, yes, bit of a mouthful that one, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully he'll go on and um, uh, and win the uh, the eventual overall icon sort of whiskey um, distiller of the year. Because I always I've been, ever since uh, I, I visited the distillery, as you you well know, uh, a few years ago, uh, I've been a big fan. And um, yes, that infamous interview with David in the uh, in the still room. Uh, <laughs> well, you couldn't actually hear what I was saying, so I ended up spending days afterwards uh, making subtitles for the entire thing. Uh, that is a mistake that I probably won't won't repeat, shall we say? But anyway, um, so so yeah, I just thought it was uh, yeah, back time to look at some some new stuff from then. Well, I say new stuff. It was it was new at the tail end of last year, and like I said, as you well know, I have episodes of the show backed up, so uh, it's not very often I get to do something that's brand spanking new. Uh, I'm normally sort of way behind, <laughs> shall we say? But anyway, um, I got enough samples together, including. Um, uh, the help of uh, of Shane, good friend of mine and uh, customer, so thank you for, for that. Um, and uh, the rest, well, most of them came from uh, the distillery themselves, and uh, I had a, a drop of the rum cask sort of knocking about. So, and this is often the, the way I tend to sort of find things. So, you know, I'll get samples in, and I think, yeah, I really want to do an episode of the show with that, but I just don't have a sort of a context or enough. Of that particular distillery so it gets sat around for a while you know and until I've got enough samples together to, to, to warrant using it so um, uh, that uh, that's a sort of uh, where we're at with that but anyway so um, not really a great deal to say about the distillery apart from obviously um, well um, I like the distillery um, did I say that before anyway um, so so let's just uh, take a look at the lineup then, shall we? Right, okay, so we're going to kick off with the small batch triple distilled. I must admit, I'm a little bit um, sad to have seen the back of the of the chapter bottling, so I always I thought that was a really neat idea, but you know, um, distilleries evolve and change and you know okay so it's a small small batch range now rather than the chapters and uh, so this is the uh, small batch uh, triple distilled uh, it's eight years old uh, it was distilled in June of 2011 bottled in June of 2019 uh, batch number one of 2019 and um, I, I, I 
the thing I love about the English distillery is the fact that they're not afraid to to be uh, to, to to try things out and and innovate and do different things. I mean, obviously they're not hamstrung by the uh, the diktats of the SWA, uh, so they can pretty much get on and do whatever they want to do. Hence, you know, multi-grain mashes and and all that kind of thing. So it's always nice to sort of see. Yeah, a distillery that's not renowned for sort of triple distilling, um, producing a triple distilled uh, malt. So I think that's going to be uh, an interesting starting point. Next spot we'll be looking at again is a small batch virgin oak. Uh, this was five years old and uh, it was distilled in June of 2013, bottled in uh, March of 2019. Bottled at 46%, again batch number one of 2019. Uh, right, number three, um, like I said, I've had this sample of the uh, the small batch rum cast knocking around for a while and still have some stock of it in the shop because it's damn good. Ooh, oh, I've given the game away on that one, haven't I? Um, anyway, uh, so this is, um, uh, again, it's a five-year-old. Uh, it was uh, distilled in April of 2013. Uh, bottled in February of uh, 2018, so um, a bit, bit of an old one there, uh, batch number one of 2018, um, and uh, as far as I'm aware, fully uh, matured in, in ex-rum casks. I don't know whether it was a, um, uh, a rum-seasoned American oak cask, because, I mean, as you know, the distillery has, has a, t a tendency to season, certainly with the sherry casks, uh, their own sherry cask, so they, they buy in the the uh, American oak and then season them with sherry to avoid any of the sulphur malarkey, uh, which is good. Um, so I don't know whether this was an actual rum cask or whether it was a um, an American oak cask that had been seasoned with rum. But anyway, we shall find out, I guess. Well, we probably won't because you, you know what I mean. Anyway, um, bottling number four is... Um, uh, slightly different bottling. It's called the Lest We Forget, or the the Poppy Whiskey, uh, depending upon uh, which website you look at. Um, this is the second release of this particular bottling, and uh, it was bottled to commemorate the um, uh, 100 years since the the Treaty of Versailles, uh, which uh, ended uh, the First World War, didn't it? Um, so this is bottled at 43% uh, as opposed to 46%. We shall see what that uh, what that's like. Uh, next bottling we'll be looking at is uh, a single cask release. This is the heavily peated triple distilled. Wow, really looking forward to trying that one. That's going to be really intriguing um, to see. Uh, quite, I mean, because the, the distillery from from what David was telling me, and certainly the, the last bottling we'll be looking at, the uh, small batch smoky virgin oak was peated to uh, fifty five parts per million. So one imagines that um, the, uh, the the peat peating level is the same for uh, this particular one. And we see it'll be interesting to see how, how much peat is actually left after it's been uh, triple distilled. So um, so this was cask uh, B one one five four distilled in August of 2010 and bottled in August of 2018, thus making it eight years old. And as I said, the last bottling of the day is the small batch Smoky Virgin Oak. Uh, this was distilled in October of 2012, bottled in August of 2019, and is six years old, and again bottled at 46%. Oh, incidentally, the um, single cast bottling is bottled at 57.5%. Um, so there you go. That's uh, the lineup. So uh, let's start with the uh, the triple discount. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That is a lovely nose. Slightly high toned. Um, a little bit bubble gummy, possibly. Um, but what I love about the the style of the English whiskey, um, the, the unpeated anyway, is the lovely barley focus. I've, I've always preferred the unpeated spirit to their peated spirit. Yes, I know um, there there are those of you that love the sort of like you know big heavily peated uh, whiskies. Um, but I I've always thought that the the, the key to the English distillery, or St George's distillery. Um, is it's unpeated malt and um, it's absolutely lovely and it's kind of there's a sort of I suppose a sort of pseudo Irish kind of quality to it in that it's 
got a lovely softness. I mean, not that every Irish whiskey is soft, but um, white fruit, a um, little bit of lemon, orange. And, and all the time, you're just getting that lovely, fresh barley character. Um, and it's almost, and, and quite a, a developing esteriness as well. Um, and so this just ticks all my boxes. I mean, it, it, sort of, it, it kind of feels like a sort of a little bit like an Irish whiskey, a little bit like Mac Myra, you know, those kind of styles of whiskey. Um, a little bit of nettle, possibly. Um, but oh, that is just a, oh yeah, it's just a lovely nose. Let's see what the parts are. Again, very barley. There's that slight bubblegummy note on the with the white fruits, um, a little high tone note as well. Um, touch of honey, a little bit of oak, not a huge amount of oak in actual fact. The oak is kind of more coming through on the finish with a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of tannin. Um, but that is actually fabulously balanced and um, really juicy, really fruity barley accented um, it's a little bittering at the finish but that's just kind of adding adding a lot, almost bitter dark chocolate note uh, and overall that really is a lovely complex whiskey um, the triple distillation seems to have uh, emphasized the, the the estuary fruit and barley it's not kind of taken away anything um, and certainly they have been judicious with the oak. I'm guessing that there's quite, I would imagine, probably a lot of refill. I don't get any first fill characteristic in that particular whiskey, so uh, not allowing the oak to overpower the, uh, the, the spirit itself. So absolutely spot on, really nice. Not hugely expensive. I think that all of the um, small batch bottlings are around the sort of mid 50s you can probably pick them up a little bit less than more towards the 50 pound end of the spectrum but um yeah i think they're really good i think that's lovely okay so uh, let's uh, move on to the five-year-old small batch virgin oak let's see what that gives us on this oak uh, but it's not overly oaked. I mean, the oak is there. It's got that slight grittiness, um, but some lovely pliant vanilla. Um, again, barley. It's obviously not got the high-toned estuary character of the uh, the triple distilled, but it's so. It's, and it's got a little bit more weight. Obviously, that's a combination of the the new oak and the uh, the weight of the spirit. There's a little bit of toffee, touch of peanut, gooseberry. Again, a slight nettly note, um, but all, again, wonderfully balanced. And and the thing is, that with with virgin oak, it can be very very intense, obviously, as we know. Um, but this has really retained the balance, absolutely fantastically. See what passes like. Opens with the barley, oak moves in relatively quickly. I mean, it's noticeable, but it, like on the nose, it's not in intrusive. There's a, a, a slight nuttiness there, um, a little bit of tannin, a touch of bitterness again on the finish. Um, some lovely fleshy apricot fruit, um, a little honey. I mean, again, that is a lovely mouthful. It is very complex. Uh, considering it's it's uh, relatively young age um, it's certainly not short or spirity or anything like that it's got a lovely length the oak is, is perfectly uh, in balance with with the uh, the spirit and um, that is again another lovely bottle 
Right, okay, so let's move on to the rum cask. So again, five years old. Let's see what those give us on this end, shall we? Again, the cask is quite up front, um, but it's not dominating. I'm getting the, the Demerara sugar, the rummy dried fruits, a little chocolatey tannin. But again, dense apricot, rich apricot, a little bit of honey as well. You can certainly smell the distillery character uh, coming through in, in, in buckets. Um, little apple, little grapefruit, not getting any of that sort of nettly note on, on this particular bottling, but again, the balance is absolutely superb. There's a little bit of wood smoke, a little bit of toast, um, and again, just absolutely wonderfully harmonious. Um, so, pass like. Hmm. Again, opens up with the barley, apricot, apple, a little bit of pear, lemon. Oak is a lot subtler. I mean, it again, it's coming through more on the finish. It's certainly got a very rummy dried fruit finish. Again, a touch of demerara sugar, a little bit of bitter chocolate tannin. Um, nice pepperiness as well, some peppery spices. Um, and and again, like I said, so far, all very harmonious. Absolutely lovely. You can get the distillery character. The oak is not too intrusive. And it's all just lovely and balanced. And what more could you ask for? Okay, so let's move on to the Lest We Forget or the Poppy Whiskey or whatever you want to call it. Um, let's see what the notes give us. It's a little shy, a little subdued. Um, again, plenty of distillery character. A little bit more in the sort of like the white fruit end of the spectrum, sort of apple, pear. Not quite so much of the sort of full apricot kind of character. Maybe that's what 43% is, has done to this particular spirit and just lessened a little bit of the weight. A um, little bit of uh, vanilla, a little bit of almond, some cinnamon. Touch of earth and possibly some peat in the background. I mean, if there is some peat used in here, it's certainly not peated to the usual uh, 55 parts per million. Um, it's possible that this may be a vatting of, of peated and unpeated spirit, or it just might be um, a lighter peating uh, of, of this particular batch of barley, maybe. I don't know. Um, didn't ask that question um, but certainly there feels like there's a little bit of peat there in the background um, actually that again is really well balanced Let's see what the parts like There is definitely some peat here, um, slightly earthy, lightly phenolic, a little bit herbal. You can tell that's bottled at 43% because it doesn't quite have the weight of the previous bottlings. Um, but that's, you know, that's not not denigrating it whatsoever. It's just a, a, an observation. Um, again, barley, a little bit crisper maybe on the palate than the nose would suggest. Again, more in the white fruit apple pear kind of end of the spectrum a um, little bit of earth a little a reasonable amount of peat not a huge amount again i think that's all really pretty well balanced um yeah i think that is a, a perfectly pleasant <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so let's move on to the first of the two uh, the two peated uh, bottlings. So this is the single cask, heavily peated, triple distilled. Let's see what those give us. Quite a lot of peat. I'm surprised at how much peat is 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 actually here, um, considering it's been triple distilled. It's quite again high toned. Um, slightly estuary I can see the, uh, the the sort of like the similarity with the uh, with the triple distilled um, the peat has got an almost kind of violety almost kind of fishy sort of Campbelltown esky kind of uh, character to it um, again it's got some some good weight but then obviously we are talking 57 percent so I would expect that um, and the alcohol is pretty much well contained. It's not too um, too spirity. It's not too intrusive, um, and it actually has quite a, a lot of weight for a triple distilled spirit. But I mean, as we know from uh, Hazelburn, for example, that's not unusual. Um, elegant, um, again, more sort of there's a bit of apricot, but again, sort of quite a lot of white fruit. To it pass on. Again, quite a lot of peat, quite phenolic, um, slightly violety, fishy. Again, there's a Campbelltown kind of feel to this. Maybe not quite so oily uh, as, as a Campbelltown malt, but it's certainly got a real fishiness to it. Um, and quite a lot of salt on the finish, which is obviously coming from the peat. A um, little tar, little um, earth. Not quite so much of the sort of the triple distilled fruit character on the palate, um, as the peat is a lot more uh, intense and um so the balance has shifted a little bit more towards the uh, the peat uh, let's put a little drop of water with it and see what that does to it um but again you know not a bad bottling it's it's okay um you know like like i said at the beginning my personal preference is although i love peat i love the the pers personally prefer the uh, the unpeated spirit but um a bit meaty now actually um Peat is a lot lessened, uh, which is often the way with cast strength um, peated malts. Um, putting a drop of water removes that. More, possibly more fruit now. I'm getting orange, tangerine. Um, I get a little bit more vanilla as well, a little bit more of the, of the oak. Again, I would guess this has uh, been aged in, in a refill American oak cask. Um, there's a little bit of spice as well now, yeah, but yeah, I, and yeah, I'm probably getting a little bit more spirit character um, than than Pete. So, hmm, let's see what pass right now. Still fairly oily, still fairly fishy. Again, less peat. A little bit more bittering oak on the finish. Um, but again, really quite interesting. Um, again, I'm not quite getting the estuary sort of character of the um, the unpeated triple distilled. But it has again that lightness to it. Um, quite salty aftertaste and almost minerally saltiness sort of rock salt maybe I guess um, tingling at the edges of my tongue it has to be said I mean that is still a very very good whiskey um, so yeah no complaints there and finally we're on to the small batch smoky American oak um, Six years old and 46%. Let's see when those give us on the same, shall we? Oh, 
Ho ho ho! That's a bit of a grit fest, it has to be said. Um, really, really gritty tannins. Um, obvious new oak. Uh, it is really quite in your face. This is not a subtle whiskey at all. Um, quite a big chunk of earthy, bog myrtle phenolic, tarry peat. There is a little bit of vanilla trying to sort of add a little bit of balance. Um, and not, I'm not saying it's unbalanced at all, it's a bit of pepper as well. Um, but it, the, the emphasis is definitely uh, on, on the oak and the peat. That's pretty much what you're getting here. Um, and sort of in the grand scheme of things, you know, they have a, a I think, you know, a, a, a lovely balanced range. You know, you can pick and choose. I mean, um, where I think that the, they excel is certainly in the unpeated spirit, but that is still, you know, a very, very good quality spirit at the end of the day. So pass on. A little crisper on the palate, but still quite oily. Still very peated. Um, bit of sweet peat, earthy peat. Less kind of islery, sort of bog myrtle kind of saltiness that I got on the, um, the triple distilled heavily peated. Um, it's a lot earthier, it's a lot drier. Um, there's a little herbalness on the finish, um, but again, it's a big mouthful of peat and maybe not quite so much oak. The oak has seemed to be a bit more subservient to the peat on the palate, um, and certainly the distillery character is, to be fair, a little lost, uh, although th there is elements of it there. So, um, again, you can say it's a pretty successful bottling. Uh, not my sort of favourite of all of their, their bottlings, but certainly the quality just just jumps out at you. So again, another another very, very good whiskey. Right, okay, so that's uh, some today's episode of the show. Firstly, a big, big thank you to uh, the uh, English Whiskey Company for some of the samples for today's episode of the show. A big thank you to Shane for the uh, sample of the uh, um, heavily peated triple distilled. Um, right, so um, the triple distilled. I mean, I love that. That was almost my favourite. I would, I would say, um, lovely high toned. Uh, fruity character. I mean, some people might not be too au fait with the slight bubblegummy character. Um, they might, it, I guess, it could be construed as slightly um, confected, I suppose. Um, but I kind of quite like that. I, I mean, it's sort of, I suppose, I like Viognier, and Viognier can come across a little bit like that. Um, and so I don't mind a little bubblegummy fruit, you know, as long as it's not. OTT on the sweetness, which I don't think that was. It, it was lovely, it was estery, um, and you know, I thought really very, very good. Um, the um, virgin oak bottling, again, I thought really well balanced. You know, virgin oak can be sort of, you know, pretty harsh on your, on the character of your spirit, but certainly I think um, the balance was just absolutely spot on with that one. Um, the rum cask, well, I mean, it has to be said, I think that is probably one of my favourite bottlings that uh, um, the, uh, the distillery has done. Again, just gorgeously balanced, all harmonious, the, the rummy dried fruits just adding that sort of extra dimension, but not obliterating any distillery character. And it's just, that is just how you make a damn good whiskey where you know it's all to me it's all about the balance and the harmony and you know everything working together to sort of create you know a, a, an all-round lovely spirit you know nothing overpowering nothing jarring just all harmonious and just absolute spot on 
the um, the lest we forget bottling. Um, for a peated English whiskey, I thought that was was really very very good. And like I said, maybe it's a a, a bottling you know made up of uh, blending together peated and unpeated spirit. I wouldn't put that past the distillery to do that. Um, and to me, worked absolutely amazing. And it's it's the thing it's the thing I've always said about distilleries that that um, are primarily producing unpeated spirit, you know, distilleries like sort of Ben Romack, for example, and um, uh, Knock Do, um, you know, keep the peat levels relatively low, add a little background smokiness, a little bit of peatiness, but don't o overpower the character of your spirit. But, you know, just delicacy, that's that's the, the key on that one, and I think that's why that particular one works. Um, the um, single cask, uh, triple distilled, heavily peated. Um, I thought the nose was really impressive, uh, really quite balanced palate, and maybe a little bit more skewed towards the peat character. Um, again, nothing wrong with the quality of it at all. Um, and yeah, I think if that's the sort of uh, whiskey that sort of you know floats your boat, so to speak, you'll be more than happy with that. And you know, I'm got no no issues with that at all and pretty much the same can be said for the smoky virgin oak um again you know quite a sort of probably my least favored of all of them because of the fact that it was pretty much oak and peat and maybe a bit of distillery character but only because obviously i kind of got to that point if you see what i mean and so you know, you you almost start searching for the, uh, the 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 distillery character notes. But again, can't argue with the quality of that particular whiskey. Um, just you know, probably not quite my most favoured of uh, whiskies. And like I said, I I love the peated malts. Um, but when when you're more renowned for doing unpeated, I mean, you know, it's just a, just a bit of a sort of a, a personal preference. That's all. But anyway. Um, so uh, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and uh, you know, if you've not tasted any of uh, the English uh, whiskey company bottlings, then you know I would certainly suggest that you do so. And you know, we've got we've got quite a few in stock, and um, of course, we do ship internationally. Um, so don't feel afraid to, uh, to to grab a bottle because they are bloody good anyway um that's pretty much it for this week next week next week is going to be interesting shall we say anyway i'm not going to say anything more than that so until next week good afternoon and good ramming